Today I'd like you taking some notes in your spiral writer's notebook. In your spiral, I'd like you to title this sentence variety, and don't forget to, that we are now listing the dates on these entries. So sentence variety 11-8-2012. You have a sentence analysis sheet on your desk, and you have a journal entry. Um, the journal entry you can keep somewhere, but we won't look at that as directly as we will look at your sentence analysis sheet. That sheet is a tool. It's an analytical tool. That means it takes apart your journal entry. So you can see it like I see it. I see your journal entry not necessarily as ideas, but I often see it as grammar, subjects, predicates, clauses, sentence lengths. And that's how I want you to see your journal entry. So you've done this. You've spent a few days with this sentence analysis sheet. And now, let's use it to answer a simple question. Repetition is a problem in writing if it occurs frequently and unintentionally. Some people might repeat themselves intentionally, like Martin Luther King might say, I have a dream, and repeat that over and over on purpose. But when you repeat yourself, usually you're doing it accidentally. And repetition can slow down writing, can make it seem as if the writer doesn't care about their subject, and to use your word, can make the writing seem boring. We want to avoid that. We want to make sure that your sentences are varied. And the first step is finding where the repetition occurs. All right, so look at your sentence analysis sheet. Where can repetition occur in your sentences, Dahlia? In the beginning, first word. Okay, so let's look at opening word or words. I want everybody to look at their sentence analysis sheet and circle the first word in every sentence. for a moment. And Michaela is doing this properly. So the first word in every sentence would not be the noun, would not be the verb. It's the first word on the first clause line. Not the second clause, the third clause, but the first clause, first word. Circle that, please. You're circling it so you can see them more easily. First word of each sentence. Is anybody immediately seeing repetition? Uh, yeah, Logan, what do you see? I. Jimmy. He. Andrew. Three times, especially in a row. If it's three times spaced among like 15 sentences, it's probably not a problem, Andrew. But if it's three times in a row, what do you have? Two times in a row is enough. What's the word? I. Dolly, what do you have? It was like, it was like a pattern with when and with. When and with? Okay, good. Uh, uh, Jacob? When. When? Good. Uh, Jimmy, do you have? Oh, I. I? Then. then. Excellent. Natalie? Mm -hmm. I. Very good. Okay, so you've identified problems with repetition already. And we haven't even really begun very much. We've just looked at one aspect of the sentence analysis sheet. What else does the sentence analysis sheet pull out for you that might show repetition? Where else might repetition lie? Jacob? <coughs> Subject, which is your noun. Predicate, which is your verb. Jacob's right. So now look down those columns, your noun and verb columns. Somebody finding repetition there? Dahlia? I. What else? Jenna? I. Others? Noah? We. How about verbs? Oh, JC? 
Would. Uh, would is a helping verb. So JC, make sure you're looking at the main verb as well. Um, do you have repetition in the main verbs? Not really. Okay. So if you say, for instance, JC, um, I would spend, I would enjoy, I would purchase, then it's really spend, enjoy, and purchase, which is probably not a problem. But what do you have? Would have, excellent. Now you've got the problem. Yeah. Uh, if. Uh, if. Ifs. You see ifs quite often? Uh, if, uh, if. Is. Yes. Colton is quite often presents a problem and a challenge for students. Jacob. Uh, for the nouns, I, he, and those I, he, is. Good. Mason. We. we. I. Excellent. Okay. Hands down. You're seeing the problems still. I can think of two other pieces of data on the sentence analysis sheet that could show you problems in repetition. What other data is on the sheet now that could show you problems, Jacob? Uh, the number of words. Sentence length. Thank you. You have a problem with repetition if you write the same basic length of sentences one after the other. So if I see seven, seven, six, seven, eight, five, seven, seven, six, we have a problem. If I see seven, ten, twelve, six, five, ten, twenty, thirteen, eight, seven, that's not a problem. Because your sentence length is going up and down and up and down. If and think about it as a graph. If I were to have a graph of sentence length, and my sentence lengths were all the same, so I have a bar graph, and there's only a little bit of variety, and it basically looks like a plateau, that's a problem. If, on the other hand, I see sentence lengths on a bar graph that look like this, going back and forth and up and down, that's not a problem. That's what you're looking for. So the sentence analysis sheet shows you your length of sentences. Is anybody seeing sentences back to back that are all basically the same length? Mason? Four or five sevens in a row? Do you see two sevens in a row? See, Mason, if you have four or five sentence sevens, but they're all kind of spaced out among other lengths, it might not be a problem. Okay, I'm looking for repetition in a row. Dahlia? It's like 16, 17. 16, 17. So two basic sentence lengths um, in a row. That's an example. Andrew? 9, 10, 9, 10. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Jacob? 13, 14. That's a possible problem in 8, 9. That's a possible problem as well. Noah? That's not a problem. 11, 7 is good variety. Okay, that's, that's far enough uh, apart from each other that we're looking for that. Colton? 7 through 26? Yeah. Oh, well, it looks like you probably have some variety there. So you're doing, you're doing well. One last piece of data on the sentence analysis sheet. Like in the clause itself? Number of clauses. So if you are writing two clauses, two clauses, two clauses, two clauses, that's a problem. One, three, five, two, four, two, one. That's not a problem. You're looking for variety. If your numbers of clauses bounce up and down, that's good. If they always stay the same or you see a few in a row that are the same, we might have a problem we might want to improve. Your primary problems, and when I say you, I mean students of your age, will be here and here. But you could have any one of these five problems. You could have all five of these problems at the same time. The older you get, the less you write with repetition. An elementary school student might see problems on all five of these. Because they're probably writing simple sentences of one clause that are really short that all use the same subject and the same, same basic verb. But you are more developed, so chances are pretty good that you're only seeing your repetition in a couple key places, most likely the subject and the predicate. But here's what I want you to do now. And this is time for you to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. 
below these notes or to the side somewhere on the page, I want you to actively list what your problem or problems is or are. You could have multiples. And the homework assignment or revising the journal entry, you're now setting your task. So I want you to tell yourself what you must fix. So Riley, what problem are you going to fix? Okay, keep looking. Think about it. Colton, what are you going to fix? Oh, uh, we. Not right now. Um, we're not looking at expanding the story. In fact, you can keep the same number of sentences. Nouns and verbs. Okay, you're going to look at nouns and verbs. Mason, what are you looking at? Number of clauses. Excellent, Andrew. Number of clauses, and what was the last bit? Uh, sentence, length, yeah. sentence length. Excellent. Logan? Repeating the same opening words. Repeating the same opening words. What's your opening word that you're going to look at? Excellent. Dahlia? Um, repeating nouns, the length, and the clauses. Nouns, length, and clauses. Good. All right, so <laughs> you folks have the problems. Now let's talk about solutions. We English teachers like to tell students, hey, you have this problem, go fix it. And then sometimes we don't really tell you how. If anything, I will overwhelm you with strategies on fixing. So at first, it can be a little bit overwhelming when I show you all these different strategies. But by practicing them, using them, as we'll start in class, they'll become a lot easier. They'll become second nature. All right, let's think about this for a moment. Um, Logan, were you talking about number of clauses, or was that you, Mason? OK, so Mason's writing sentences that all have the same basic number of clauses. What number is that? One. one. OK, good. He writes one clause, one clause, one clause, one clause, let's say, for instance. What could he do to vary the number of clauses in his sentences? How does he do that? How does he increase their length? Possibly, but what if I'm adding detail that doesn't change the number of clauses? So I add an adjective, or I add an adverb, or I add a prepositional phrase, but I still have the same one clause. <laughs> what does the semicolon accomplish, Shane? From where? Shane's almost there. And Jenna was correct as well. You want to lengthen these sentences? You want to add something? Fine. If sentence one and sentence two are both one clause, combine them into a new sentence that is two clauses. I'm not going to ask you to add a lot of material. In fact, if your uh, journal entry goes from 10 sentences to six, I don't have a problem with it. Because what I'm going to do is ask you to cut, combine, and take the material you already have. Colton. I'm sorry? What about paragraphs? Well, we're not going to, this is, that's okay, Colton. This is probably going to be one paragraph long, so we don't have to worry about paragraph structure right now. It will be a concern. We'll talk about paragraph structure, but not today. Yeah, Mason. Only if you keep combining two clauses. So let's say we have one, two, three, and four. And sentence one is one clause. And sentence two, three, and four, those are all one clause as well. I combine sentence two and sentence three into a two clause sentence. And then I have one and one. It's less of a problem now. I could have two one clause sentences back to back, perhaps. We'll see how they sound. But now, that's much less of a problem. One clause four times in a row, that's a problem. Two, one, and one, much less of a problem. Okay. Let's say I have the opposite problem. 
I'm writing sentences that are all 25 to 30 words in length, one after the other. So now what do I do? Thank you, Colton. These two strategies are pretty powerful. And you might think they're simple, and they are simple. And that's good. Simple's better. Combine sentences or split them. But we have other problems that might not be solved here. And for those of you running into problems with the subject, you need to find a new one that might seem pretty vague. But what I like to do is ask students to find a subject that is in the sentence already, but it's not in the subject position. So I'll give you an example. I want to see your examples, but I'll give you an example that I was working with a student a couple weeks ago. She wrote the sentence, um, I find America's funniest home videos hilarious. But she kept repeating I as the subject of her sentences. Think about that sentence for a moment. I find America's funniest home videos hilarious. What else in the sentence could be her subject? Jacob. Can you rewrite the sentence to keep the same ideas, but America's Funniest Home Videos is the subject? Start the sentence with America's Funniest Home Videos. I find America's Funniest Home Videos hilarious. America's Funniest Home Videos. Uh, hold on. I'm going to let Jacob try it. Luke, what do you got? Is hilarious. That's that's not bad, and that changes it. Yeah, Mason. Is hilarious to me. Okay, the same kind of thing. We just added the the, the me in there. Uh, Colton. America's Funniest Home Videos is my favorite. Show. Is my favorite show. Sure, that could work as well. I like to avoid the verb is, so I would write a sentence like America's Funniest Home Videos makes me laugh. But the basic principle is the same. Chances are good that somewhere in your sentence you've got a noun or a pronoun that can be the subject. All you have to do is rearrange. Flip the sentence around. Find something that's in there. It'll make your life easier, too, if you realize the subject is already in the sentence. Mix nouns and pronouns. If you're using the same proper noun all the time, mix it with a pronoun. And find different ways to trade those out. So I could be Mr. Clarkson, my teacher, or he. There are three different ways to refer to me. Right. Or him. If you always use the same way to refer to me, then you will create repetition. But if you're mixing that around, it will lessen the repetition. These four strategies on the board should be next to you when you're thinking about how to revise. Because you should be able to use one of them to revise your sentences, to fix. But of course, you're not really going to see that until we see examples. So who has an example that they would like to use? OK, Dahlia, what kind of repetition are you looking at? I? OK. Um, can I see two sentences back to back, please, with you typing them on the screen? So Dahlia is going to type her two I sentences back to back. And as I work with Dahlia, I'll be using one of the strategies, possibly two, showing how you can do that. Jacob? Yes, of course. Why, why are you people on board yet yeah, two sentences? Man, first and second period, I said, who wants to volunteer? 
Cricket. Cricket. Who wants me to do their homework for them? Cricket. Cricket. I'm like, oh my gosh, people, you are making me happy. Put your hands down. I'll get to as many of you as I can. Okay. Yes, Kayla. Yeah, I know. We'll see it. Have a seat, Jacob. I'm glad you're eager. Um, let me do this verbally for Michaela. I'm going to do this verbally. I want everybody paying attention while Dahlia types. The sentence, I've been practicing it for days, but I still can't get it right. It's one sentence, but how many clauses does it contain? I know you know. Shane? Two. So knock it down to one clause. I've been practicing for days, but I still can't get it right. That's basically the idea. I've been practicing for days, but still can't get it right. All I did was remove the I. How many of you are working with sentences that have two verbs connected to one noun? It's a good strategy, and that's what I just did with Michaela's. It's a single noun, but it's two verbs now, and, and now she hasn't repeated the I. All right, let's take a look at Dahlia's. If I won $300, I would give some to charity, save it, and spend it. Giving some money to charity means that I'm helping people out. One, two, three. We want to reduce this to at least two. Okay. Um, let's take a look at that second sentence. Let's leave the first one intact for the moment. The first one is in if then. If I did this, then I would do this. So we quite often need the repetition of the I in there. We might not be able to fix that. So any of you dealing with the same if then statement, it might be difficult to fix. So let's fix the second one. Giving some money to charity means that I am helping people out. Yes, Colton. Uh, if I went no, Colton, we're going to leave the first sentence alone. Okay. We're going to look at the second sentence. Yes. Or just helps. I actually did something that's not listed on your four strategies, and I will list it as a fifth strategy because I actually use this one a lot. And I just used it with Michaela's too. Just cut words. I just cut words with Dahlia, I cut words with Michaela's. Michaela's, I just removed the I, and it still worked. With Dahlia's, I remove. Um, more words and change the helping to helps, but it still makes sense and Jacob could see it. Giving some money to charity helps people out. Colton? I'm sorry? That's okay. Colton, it's okay. We're going to leave that first sentence alone because now we have the if then eyes, which is fine. Yes? Okay, that's fine. We're going to leave that first sentence alone. Um, let's see, we had a lot of hands up. Mia, go ahead. Mia, type. Somebody give me one verbally. Yeah, Logan. If I won $300, <laughs> Winning $300 would make me super happy. I want to explain what I just did with Logan's. I don't want all of you paying attention to it. Because it's a strategy that more sophisticated writers use. The one, Colton, put your hand down. W O N, if I won. It's a verb. Being used as a verb. 
Use it as a noun. How do you do that? You make it an ing verb. Galia knew that because her second sentence started with which word? Giving. Giving. Stop using nouns and pronouns as, senten as sentence openers, as subjects. Use ing verbs. Last class period, one student was talking about traveling to um, Iowa to visit family. So his, his new sentence began with going to Iowa. And it could have begun with traveling to Iowa. Dahlia knew that she's talking about giving money to charity. So she starts with the word giving. Logan's talking about winning money. But he has this long, complicated structure, as most of you do, with the if I won money. Start with winning. Is it the I we're focusing on, Mia? I really wanted to win this contest because there's so many things you can do with the money. I sat down and thought about what I should do with it. Dahlia? Okay, go for it. Dolly is already putting into practice what I'm asking for. And let me, once again, let me backtrack and make sure that everybody understands what she's doing. We're finding a new subject that's in the sentence already. I did it with Logan's, but it needed some transformation. So I take one and make it winning. Okay, so one becomes winning, and now it's a subject of a sentence. Remember how I've told you through vocabulary that ing words are, are nouns? They can be used as nouns. Okay, so I used an ing word as a noun. Dolly is doing the same thing. So she says, well, the first sentence focuses on winning the contest. So I'll start with winning the contest. And she was, uh, um, you were fumbling a little bit on the completion, so I'll complete it for you. Winning the contest. There you go. Yes, Michaela. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me make sure everybody understands the first one. Um, in strategy number three, where you're finding a new subject, you're going to find new subjects in all sorts of different places. But I guarantee they will already be somewhere in sentence. So don't think, oh, I need inspiration from on high. I need to create a new subject out of thin air. No, look at what's in the sentence. Sometimes it takes some transformation, as with Logan's. But you can do it. What are you going to do with the second sentence, Michaela? Thank you. Exactly what I was thinking of. Cutting. I think all of you can do this. I'll tell you what. Huh? Oh, what? I dropped the what? Sorry. My experience with students has been that once these problems are laid bare for you, you know kind of how to fix it. You can fumble around a little and find a repair. The problem is you can't see them. That's what the sentence analysis sheet is for. It's to help you analyze and see these problems, circling words, noting nouns and verbs, and so on. And then we can move on. All right, uh, Jacob, you had uh, an example, so let's work with yours. You have eyes, right? You've got like five in a row. One clause. Give me two sentences. Back to back. Um, other hands, maybe one I can do verbally. Logan, I've already done one for you. So, um, although I'll do one for you if nobody else wants me to work on one. Dolly, I've already done one for you. Uh, no? no? Anything. Okay, Logan. Until I had $400 and then I would spend it. We're going to do the cutting thing again and then spend it. 
just cut out the I. I would save money until I had $400 and then I would spend it becomes I would save money until I had $400 and then spend it. Colton? Okay, yep. You could do that. Shane? Yes, there there should be some. That's fine, not a problem. Dahlia. Sorry, speak. One clause. I would give them one hundred dollars. So what what's the problem? Do you want to? Giving some money to charity means helping people or would uh, giving money to charity helps people out I would give them one hundred dollars no comma even giving them one hundred dollars now you've combined sentence two and three all right I love to watch him with my friends I record all of his games on my TV sentence combining folks here's how you know you should sentence combine or how you can sentence combine. It won't work with every single one. If I open two sentences with the same subject, it's a perfect candidate for sentence combination. So we're going to combine these sentences. Logan, do you see it? Yeah. What, what do you got? I love to watch the online with my friends and record all the games on my TV. That's it. Yeah, you, you got one, Mason? Yeah. All right, I think four one clause sentences. Yes, give me two. Type them. We've got time for one more. And as he's typing, I want to remind everybody that what the work that we're doing now, you need to do for the journal entry. And your journal entry should not be very long, only, what, eight, 12 sentences, somewhere in there. So it should not be difficult, but here's my, my warning and my promise. I will grade you only on sentence variety. I'm not grading you on any other aspect of grammar. I'm not grading you on your topic sentences. I'm not grading you on the length of the, se of the journal entry. So if you knock it down from 12 to 8, you will not lose points. I will grade it purely on sentence variety. And what will I look for? I'll look for repetition of nouns, verbs, Sentence length, clause number, and opening words. Those five. Shane? Okay. All right. Hey, folks, we've got about four or five minutes left in class. Chill. You've done an excellent job during this class period. Let's keep it going for Mason. Sentence combination. He's writing with single clause sentences back to back to back. So let's make sure that he's combining them into a, um, a different sort of sentence. Yeah. Isn't that sound kind of clunky though? I play football for McCord, and I am a cornerback and wide receiver. It it does what it does the combining, but I think we could do this a little better. Yeah, JC. Yes, actually, you're correct. There's an agreement problem. Good, good call, JC. Um, my positions are cornerback and wide receiver. This indicates a plural, therefore, that should be plural and that should be plural as well. Um, Shane, what do you see? True. However, I, we don't have a problem with I right now, do we? So we can keep the I. And I like the I because it's a little bit more active. My positions are is not as active as I play. So let's keep the I play in there. Jacob? That's what I was thinking. However, Jacob, what word have we lost when you do that? I play cornerback and wide receiver for McCord. What important word have we lost? I'm sorry? Yes. 
So how do you add that word back in? Because we might need it. There you go. I play cornerback and wide receiver for McCord football. Now, here's the problem. I haven't necessarily solved the single clause problem because he still only has a single clause. Still the sentence is better. I play cornerback and wide receiver for McCord football. Still, he has one clause. Yes, Colton? Yep, that would work as well. That would combine the two into one sentence. Um, but it's still a single clause sentence. So, Mason, you might take a look at combining other sentences to make multiple clauses. Okay. Any last questions or concerns? No, everybody understand what's due for Wednesday because the last time we'll have in class to work on it. So tomorrow you have the day off, and Monday you have vocabulary. And on what, on Tuesday we're talking about your research, which will come back to you. Yeah. No, the vocab we will do in class on Monday. Okay.